Okay, I hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving break. We are starting uh, chapter 8. We're going to do two sections before the final. So we're breaking up 8.1 into two days. So this is just the first part. Um, it's very heavy in vocabulary. So um, you are expected to write down all of the vocabulary words that are underlined and have those with you in class on Monday. I will check your notes to make sure you have this down. I also would like you, if you run into a spot where you have questions, to please write your question down, and we can go over that in class on Monday as well. There's also a spot where I ask you to try a problem on your own. That should also be written in your notes, and I will check for that as well. So, first thing, a vector is a quantity with both magnitude and direction. Magnitude um, just means size, and direction obviously means it's pointed in a certain direction. How we name vectors. Vectors um, usually have two points, an initial point where it starts, a terminal point, um, not necessarily where it ends because it goes through that point, but that's how we might name it. Or it might be named with a single letter. So you would name this vector either vector A. Notice it has a half arrow on top, not a full arrow because a full arrow would indicate a ray. Or you would name it by its um, points P, Q with a ray on top of it as well. Um, I have down here magnitude is the length of a line segment. To denote magnitude of a vector, you write it um, with an absolute value sign around it. What I just wrote there says magnitude of vector A. The direction is then indicated by the arrowhead. That indicates which direction your vector is traveling in or pointed at. The standard position of a vector is to be at the origin. So the initial point of the vector is at the origin or the point 0, 0. The direction of the vector is the angle between the x-axis and the vector. So for example, this angle here, let's say it's 45 degrees, that would be the direction of vector b. So the direction of vector b would be 45 degrees. So vectors generally drawn on a coordinate plane um, are drawn with a positive angle with the x-axis and are um, drawn with an arrowhead indicating the direction that they are. Um, a zero vector has its initial and its terminal points um, at the origin. So if you think about um, a coordinate plane, both the initial and the terminal points would be there at the origin. So the magnitude of that vector, its size, Right, it's, it has a zero magnitude, so the magnitude would be zero. The direction, because it's really just a point, can be any direction um, you want. So a zero vector has no magnitude in any direction. Equal vectors are two vectors with the same direction and magnitude. So it's really critical that you notice you need the same direction and the same magnitude. So in yellow here I have a bunch of vectors. Um, some of them have same direction, some have same magnitude, some have same direction, different magnitude. So we want to say which ones are actually equal. If you look at um, z and y, now normally you would take out a ruler say and, and actually measure the, the length of these line segments to say they have the same magnitude, but we're just going to kind of eye it. So vector z and vector y Notice they're pointing in the same direction. If we busted out a protractor, we could um, draw an axis here, label this angle, and see that it would be the same. We could take a ruler and measure this length and see that it would be the same. So we would say vectors z and vectors y both have the same direction and the same magnitude, so they are equal. Um, Another example of equal vectors would be V and U. See, they are both pointing straight down, and they have about the same magnitude. Um, for our sakes, we will call those equal V and U. Um, some non-equal vectors. Notice X and W have the same direction, but W is significantly longer than X. It has a significantly longer magnitude. So vector X is not equal to vector w, um, even though they have the same direction. 
We have something called a resultant, which is the sum of two or more vectors. So you can kind of think of vectors as, as like forces in physics. If you have two forces that are working together, um, even if they are separate forces, what they're going to result in is a combined force that is the addition of the two vectors or forces. So when we have, um, when we add up two vectors together, we get something called the resultant. And there's a couple ways in which we show the addition of two vectors and where we find a resultant. So say we have vector p and vector q, we add them together, the resultant is vector p plus vector q. Um, the first method that we use to find a resultant is the parallelogram method. So let's say I give you two vectors. I'm going to give you vector p here and I'm going to give you vector q. Okay, how do you find p plus q? The first thing you want to do is you want to draw the two vectors so that their initial points are touching. So remember their initial points are the points um, not close to the arrow. Um, and you're going to draw those two vectors so that the initial points are touching. So I'm going to copy vector p here. Maybe I trace it, maybe I measure it. And I'm going to say, here's vector p. Oops. And then I'm going to draw vector q with um, its initial side touching. So it's going to look something like this. There's vector q. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, kind of look at this as two sides of a parallelogram. So this is a parallelogram method. I'm going to kind of draw a parallelogram. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, remember in, in a parallelogram, opposite sides are parallel and congruent. So I'm just going to um, extend these lines up so I have two parallel sides. This would be parallel here. This would be parallel here. They would be equal in opposite directions or opposite sides. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a di I'm going to draw the diagonal of the parallelogram and that's going to be the resultant. So I'm going to start at the initial side, the initial point, and I'm going to draw a vector um, to the uh, terminal side would be the other side. Sorry, that's kind of a messy line. Um, but your your the diagonal of the parallelogram that would be your vector p plus q. That is the parallelogram method, um, and then you can see, you'll be able to see when your vectors are significantly different sizes, how that affects the length of, of the resultant. The triangle method, or what's called tip to tail, um, is, is similar, except that we are not drawing a triangle, or a parallelogram, we're drawing a triangle. So let's take, I'm going to give you vectors, um, how about I'll give you vector r here, we'll make it a little smaller, and I'll give you vector um, v, we'll make v a little bigger. Okay, so the first step is I'm going to again copy those vectors, whether I trace them or measure them, um, estimate the direction the best I can. I'm going to draw the vectors tip to tail. So what that means is I'm going to pick the first vector, I'm going to pick vector r, and I'm going to copy it here, there's vector r. Here's the tip or the, um, the tail, rather, of the um, initial side, or of the first vector. This would be the, the tip. Okay, so here's the tip of the first one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, draw V, and that's going to be its tail. So I'm going to draw, copy vector V with its tail connected to the tip of the first vector. So the tip um, is a vector r is connected to the tail of vector v. Um, and then what I do is I draw the resultant and the resultant again connects with the initial side of the first vector and then I want to have two arrows or two um, tips touching um, at the at the tops there. So this would be um, vector r plus v or the resultant of vectors r and v. So what I would like you to do now is try on your own to copy um, vectors v and w on your own piece of paper. Um, you can just estimate their length and their direction the best you can. And then I want you to draw the resultant um, v plus w using both the parallelogram method and the triangle method. So you need to show me both methods of copying those vectors down and drawing 
the resultant. Okay, another vocab word, opposite vectors. Um, opposite vectors have the same magnitude, opposite direction. So you can see here um, vectors G and H, right? They have the same magnitude, they are the same length, same magnitude, um, they are going in opposite directions. So those are um, opposite Opposite vectors, same with i and j. Notice they are going in opposite directions. I have one arrow pointing towards the upper right corner and one arrow pointing to the lower left corner. So those are opposite vectors, but they do have the same direction. An example of, or same magnitude. An example of non-opposite vectors, um, obviously two vectors going in the same direction or two... Um, two vectors with um, um, non-equal magnitudes. So, for example, these two guys here, opposite directions, different magnitudes, these two different magnitudes and different directions. So neither of those are opposite. Finally, parallel vectors um, are vectors that have the same or opposite directions. So, um, Notice I and J, they are obviously parallel lines. They are not going to intersect. Um, they have opposite direction, but they are parallel. Um, as with I and M here, or L and M, I guess, um, they have the same direction, but they are still parallel. So you can just think parallel lines. Um, same idea with parallel vectors. doesn't matter which direction they're going. They're just never going to intersect. Um, and finally, we have what are called components. These are two or more vectors whose sum is a given vector. Components can have any direction. So, for example here, vector x is the vector we are looking at. It is the sum, notice it's the resultant of p and q. This is using the triangle method. We added up p and q um, using the tip-to-tail method. Um, so what we have here, vector p would be called the vertical component of x and vector q would be called the horizontal component of x, of vector x. Um, so you can see vector x is made up of horizontal um, vector q and vertical vector p. Those are its components and it is the resultant of the two vectors. Um, so that is it for our um, intro to vectors. Uh, make sure you go back and do that example if you haven't already. Write down any questions you have and um, we will do some work with these in class on Monday. Enjoy the rest of your break!